That's exactly how you don't do it. I want you to know something. If you ever pay attention to it, do you always notice that it's harder to push up from the lower part up than it is from, from the top to the half? There's a reason why, right? You get more muscle growth, science show, right? I've done research on this. I watch videos, I read about it. But whenever you start from the bottom and go to the half, you're likely to build more muscle. Sometimes it's even more effective than full range of motion. But when you're doing the bench press, you wanna get full range of motion. Let me show you how to do this. Many of you don't know, I like to use my ring fingers on these rings. Now, the wider you go, the shorter the distance, okay? So if I go wide, it's a shorter distance down. If I go close, it's longer. That's where your triceps get more work. But well, we work in chest, right? Right in between. So, ring fingers. You can do middle or ring, whichever one you want. Now, your elbows don't flare out. You bring these elbows in to 45. Watch my elbows come down all the way to my chest, right? And drive it up. Elbows down, 45 degrees, not flaring out. Bring them in if you can, and all the way up. Here we go. Five quick reps. So notice, while I'm doing the bench press, I keep my upper back pressed into the bench, all right? It's almost like an arch move. It's pressed into the bench, and then I squeeze my glutes as I'm pressing at the same time. So upper back press to the top of the bench, and you squeeze your glutes, squeeze your core, and that's how perform a strong bench press. Enough of the bench press. Let's move on to the next one. See? That's exactly why you need to do dumbbell presses, right? You see the imbalance, right? You ever heard of the, the term called muscular imbalance? That's when both arms are not equally the same strength. So, saw me struggling, right? One is up here, one is down here. And what that causes is, first you need stability, which is why you have two different arms. And we're working on a bilateral movement. Also, a good way to do these is unilateral movement. That means one by one. So, let me show you how to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is the incline dumbbell press, all right? Together, which is being the bilateral movement. So, what you wanna do, <clears throat> this is the only time you can actually control your elbows, right? So, I can either bring them in here, I can go wide, I want a 45 degree, that means right in between. All the way down to your chest, push over top and squeeze your chest, all right? Down, 45, boom. <sighs> Full range of motion. All the way down here, and all the way up to the top. Notice they're at the same level the whole time. Another quick tip. If you feel like your arms are not the same strength, you do a unilateral press, which will help you understand what I'm saying a little bit more, all right? You can really distinct which arm is stronger. So, that's how we're gonna do it. You hold one up, bring one down. Other one. Alternating chest press, also called a unilateral press. You do that until one gives out and you'll know if your arms are the same strength. Let's move on. Probably like, what's wrong with that? There's nothing actually wrong with it, but I can show you what's not right with it, okay? so. Let me show you how I would do these to develop my lower chest. I used to do a decline bench press. I stopped doing them for these instead. I'll tell you why. First things first, whenever you get cables, you never wanna just pull it down like this. You ask for a shoulder injury. First, you bend your elbows, bring one, 
again, see that? That's safe, right? I never tear my shoulders doing that. Now, put one foot in front. Now I'm actually bending it just like a bench press, right? Imagine this is a decline. You push it down the same way, but instead I get to squeeze on a bench press. And what I just did, you didn't, you didn't see me squeeze. So now I get to go here uh, and I squeeze. All right, so what you wanna make sure you do, when you push down, you wanna keep your chest up. So we push down, chest is up, and you squeeze. This is where the real work comes in. That squeeze gets the blood flow going, gets a better contraction, which allows the muscle to grow. Watch how I do this. That's why I traded decline barbell bench press for the high pulley cable crossover. It just hits different. Uh. 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 Woo. You saw that, right? You know exactly what I did wrong without me telling you. If you didn't catch that, let me show you again. See so people get on this machine. This is a fly machine, right? If you fly, how do you fly? Here. You don't see birds fly like this, right? You're gonna fly. And what I did, and you see a lot of people do, is they bend the elbows here. They never get any chest contraction here. You get shoulders only, right? So if you're doing like this, training your shoulders, you're not training your chest. To do this right, glue your upper back on this chair. Now, you want these to be at, I'm gonna say chest length, right? If I bring them here, it should be right at my chest. Let's see if that's right. If I can go down one more. Now, straight. All right, push that upper back, get the seat, squeeze your chest. I want you to get a close look up, get a close look at the chest, what happens when I squeeze. Right, that's contraction right there. That's how you work the chest. It's a quick 10. Oh. Uh. 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 Woo. That's how it's done. See my chest getting swollen already. I'm not even going hard today. I'm just showing you how to do it. All right, guys, here we go. This is my last workout of the day. But what I want to talk to you about is not something that's wrong, okay? The only thing I'm gonna show you that's wrong is this. If your weights are on the ground, you don't pick them up like this. That's how you hurt your back. All right, instead, it's like you're gonna do a daily force squat, get your butt down, pick it up, bring your legs, and sit down. That's how you do that. But I want to show you something like an alternative workout to do just to work on a different type of tempo or a different method of training. Right now, what we're going to do is pause rep, okay? Once you go down to the bottom of this exercise, you're going to hold it two seconds and then fire it back up, okay? I already went over elbow placement, so make sure you keep all that in mind while you do this. But let me show you this to add to the end of your workout. <sighs> Here we go. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Uh. One, two. One. Now we're gonna superset this to finish. Same thing. One, two, one. 
Make sure that number that you got on the bench matches the push-ups that you finish with. And that's how you make your workout more challenging. Make some compound lift that you were doing in the beginning, put it at the end. But it's more of a challenge. But that's it, guys. That's our chest workout for the day. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. You know I'm here only teaching you what I think will be great for you and benefiting you long-term, not just short-term results. You guys know who you're here with, Josh Bailey. If you need more information like this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Get that chest right.